I welcome you to the second session on Introduction to Computers. Topics covered in this video are Data and Information Components of a Computer Let us try to define data. Data is everywhere. It is a collection of raw facts. Let us take the example of a student. Here, student can be considered to be an object. The facts about this object can be name Sheila, age 10, class 5. We can also identify more facts such as brown hair, green pen, writing, notebook, table. These facts, Sheila, 10, 5, does not convey any meaning. Why do they not convey any meaning? Because they are unprocessed. The facts, Sheila, 10, 5, can be interpreted in many ways. Sheila has 10 dresses, out of which 5 are new, or Sheila lives at door number 10 in the 5th cross. So, these facts, unless they are processed, does not convey any meaning. Now, we can coin the definition of data as Unprocessed collection of raw facts. It does not convey any meaning. What is information? When data is processed, we get information. So, information is a processed collection of facts. The unprocessed data, Sheila 10, 5, after being processed, gives information as Sheila, who is 10 years old, is studying in class 5. So, data when processed gives information. After processing, these facts convey some meaning. Now we can define information as processed collection of facts. It conveys some meaning. We can now consolidate the differences between data and information as data is an unprocessed collection of raw facts from which information may be derived, whereas information is a processed collection of facts from which conclusions may be drawn. Data does not convey any meaning, but Information conveys some meaning. A computer has two important components, hardware and software. Hardware is the physical component of a computer. Software is a set of instructions or programs. Here are some examples of hardware. Motherboard, which houses the CPU or the central processing unit. Memory devices such as hard disk, CD-ROMs, pen drive. Input devices, keyboard, mouse. Output devices, monitor, printer. Computer software can be classified into two. System software. Examples of system software are operating systems, utility programs, and compilers. Application software. Here you can see some application softwares which we use every day. A computer has four functional units. Input unit. Central Processing Unit, 
memory unit and output unit. Listen attentively as I explain the functions of each of these parts of a computer with the help of a block diagram. Input unit. Input unit is used to feed any form of data to the computer. CPU. Central processing unit is the major component of the computer which interprets and executes instructions. It has three major components. Control unit arithmetic logic unit and internal memory. Control unit controls the flow of data between the CPU, memory and input output devices. It also controls the entire operations of the computer. ALU performs arithmetic operations like addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, and logical operations. Internal memory, also called registers, are high-speed memories that store data for immediate processing and the results of the processing. Memory unit is of two types, main memory and secondary memory. Main memory, also called primary memory, temporarily stores programs and data which need to be currently executed. It is volatile in nature. The contents are erased when the computer is switched off. Secondary memory stores programs and data permanently. It is non-volatile in nature. The contents are not erased when the computer is switched off. Output unit. Output unit is used to present information from the computer. I will be now showing you the path by which data flows with a solid red line and the flow of control with a dotted blue line. The programs and data which are fed to the computer through the input unit is stored in the main memory. They are then sent to the internal memory of the CPU for processing. Next, the instructions and data flow into the ALU for necessary calculations to be performed. The results are sent back to the internal memory which is now stored in the main memory. The output flows from main memory to the output unit. Since main memory is volatile in nature, which means the contents of main memory are erased when the computer is switched off, we can store the contents of main memory in the secondary memory for future use. Secondary memory is non-volatile, that is, it stores the contents permanently even when the computer is switched off. We can load the programs and data from the secondary memory into main memory whenever needed. Now we can move on to the control path. Since the control unit is the one which controls the entire operations of a computer, it sends signals to all the other units whenever their action is needed. The differences between input unit and output unit. 
input unit is used to feed programs and data to the computer. Examples, mouse, keyboard. Output unit is used to present information from the computer. Examples, monitor, printer. Differences between primary memory and secondary memory. Primary memory stores programs and data temporarily. Secondary memory stores programs and data permanently. Primary memory is volatile in nature. Secondary memory is non-volatile in nature. The contents are erased when the computer is switched off. The contents are not erased when the computer is switched off. Example of primary memory is RAM, random access memory. Example of secondary memory is ROM, read only memory. That's all in this session. Thank you.